Hello and welcome to I-24 News Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports and there's plenty of action coming up. Real Madrid cruises to the final of the club world championship. It was another easy win for Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga with Arjan Robben setting a milestone. And what should sailors worry about ahead of the Rio Olympics? All this and much more coming up. Let's get started. We begin with midweek action from the Bundesliga where Bayern Munich just doesn't stop setting new records. They have now conceded just three goals in 16 matches, a new Bundesliga record, and that was not the only milestone in their match against Freiburg. Arjan Robben scored his 100th goal for the Bavarians, who was the first to congratulate him, Frank Ribéry, who did the same just 10 days earlier. Second half and Thomas Müller is on target, he scored only 65 goals for the club so far. But in the form he's in, it wouldn't take him too long to join the 100 club. Bayern Munich gets another easy win. 2-0 was the final score. Real Madrid just can't stop winning these days. It's true for the Spanish League, the Champions League, the Spanish Cup, and now also for the club World Championship, which they joined along with South American champion San Lorenzo in the semi-final. Cristiano Ronaldo, as you would expect, was the main focus for the defense of Cruz Azul. Winners of the CONCACAF Champions League, they closely watched him, but it was his teammates who were, were on target. Sergio Ramos headed the first one for the European champions, and 10 minutes from halftime, Carvajal does all the work on the right. Benzema just adds the final touch to put them two up. Believe it or not, Iker Casillas had not stopped a penalty for three years. Now he saved two in just four days. After doing it in Almeria on Friday, he did it here as well. After the break, the merengue storm again. Ronaldo knows much more than just scoring. Look at the beautiful setup for Gareth Bale, who comfortably heads in. And the Portuguese superstar does it again later on. This time, Isco is wide open for the assist. 4-0 was the final score. Real Madrid cruises to the final. Later tonight, they will know if San Lorenzo or Auckland City will be the rivals. In England, the League Cup quarterfinals are being played. Chelsea and Sheffield United are through to the semis. Liverpool is, is expected to do it tonight as a play against second division Bournemouth. But these days are not easy for the mighty Reds, who were ousted from the Champions League and are only 11th in the Premier League. Rumors surfaced up in the last few days will be revolved by the players against manager Brandon Rogers. But at least on the surface, he's sure everything is okay. Our dressing room is very strong. You know, we're very fortunate that we've got a captain who's a, a strong leader in the, in the dressing room. And that's something that's been very important in my time here, that spirit. You know, I hear one or two bits and pieces that's maybe been said about, you know, unrest. It's, it's totally untrue. Of course, we're not happy that we're not winning games. And with that, you know, these are competitive players that, and a lot of these nearly went, went and won the league last season. So they are competitive and they won't be happy with losing. But the actual spirit in the, in the group is, is very, very strong. What Liverpool may be missing is leadership on the field. Well, here's someone who provided it so many times for Arsenal. Thierry Henry, one of the most beloved players in world football, announced his retirement from the game. The 37-year-old French striker shined everywhere he played, but he was at Highbury, Arsenal's former home, where he had the best time of his career. He could have remained on the pitch for another year or two. There were offers, but he chose to leave, and now he will look at the world of football from a different angle. Michael Friedman looks back at the career of one of the most popular players in the world who says goodbye after 20 years on the pitch. Thank you. New York, Thierry. Thanks. It was inevitable. The legendary Thierry Henry has in fact announced his retirement from football at the age of 37. While it appeared the strong and talented player would go on forever, the day has come for him to hang up his cleats. The French star had a remarkable career for his country with 123 caps, and most notably, winning the World Cup in 1998. He is a true icon, impressing his country every day he puts on the blue and white jersey. The majority of his career was spent at Arsenal under Wenger, who brought him to the North London in 1999. Henri is Arsenal's all-time leading goal scorer and was part of the Invincibles, who went 49 games unbeaten in the 2003-2004 season. Wenger is proud of his striker and looks forward to his future one day back at Arsenal. He's a national man. 
because the best moment certainly of his life and of his career has been experienced here and certainly one day he will come back here in what kind of role i don't know that's what he has to think about uh, what kind of direction he wants to give to his next life arsenal even honored the striker at the emirates to commemorate the 125th year of the club with a statue of Henri in his classic knee slice celebration pose after arsenal Henri then joined the spanish giant barcelona in 2007 and won the spanish league two years in a row as well as the champions league the football star has accomplished every major trophy he could win, including the World Cup, European Champions, Champions League, European Golden Boot, Spanish League, Premier League, FA Cup, and French League. Like many other footballers near the end of their career, Henri came to the MLS and still excelled with the New York Red Bulls. Henri may be stepping off the pitch, but he's staying in the world of football. Now the former player will be tackling the media as he joins Sky Sports as a football expert and ambassador at the start of 2015, a place he's excited to be. I can't wait for the next chapter to begin with Sky Sports. I played for some of the best teams in football and now I'm joining what I think is the best team in television. As Henri returns to London, where he is truly admired, the world will continue to get to watch the football god on TV. NBA now, and as always, there were great expectations from the New York Knicks ahead of the season, but as always, the team is letting the fans down. The team from the Big Apple has the second worst record in the league, only the miserable Sixers are below, and their home game against the Mavericks was just another bad day at the office. There were moments in which you could see this team has potential, nice play here with a steal and a dunk by Team Hardaway Jr. Next possession, Carmelo Anthony powers his way to the hoop and makes it a four-point game, but that was pretty much all they had. The visitors from Dallas were in control all along. The Mavericks shot 15 of 33 from downtown, including this one from Dirk Nowitzki. He led the Texas team with 16 points. Five different players put up double digits for the Mavs, including Devin Harris, who nailed three shots from outside on the way to an easy 107-87 win. The LA Lakers are going through a terrible season, but it didn't stop their leading star from reaching an incredible milestone this week. Kobe Bryant is now the number three in the all-time scoring list. Yes, even Michael Jordan is behind him. Michael Friedman with a story. Kobe Bryant has once again passed another great basketball legend as he moved to third place in the NBA's all-time scoring list. He sank both free throws in the second quarter of the Lakers match against the Minnesota Timberwolves to first tie and then pass Michael Jordan. I mean, it's a huge honor. I mean, it's been such a long journey. Um, and uh, it's going by really fast, though. And, you know, it feels great to be at this point. Even after leaving him behind, Brian continues to admire and improve from his childhood idol, Michael Jordan. Well, I mean, I try to learn so much, and, uh, you know, from him in particular. I mean, he's, he's, he's been such a huge part of my success in my career and giving me advice and uh, offering mentorship and things like that. So, um, you know, that, that relationship has meant everything to me. Jordan is also very proud to witness Kobe passing him. I congratulate Kobe on reaching this milestone. He's obviously a great player with a strong work ethic and has an equally strong passion for the game of basketball. I've enjoyed watching his game evolve over the years and I look forward to seeing what he accomplishes next. With just Karl Malone and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar ahead of the 36-year-old, he will have to really push to topple those superstars. Oh my God, you know, you know, you know. I have any idea how much my body hurts from day to day. I mean, it's, 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 it's tough, man. I'm no spring chicken, but it feels good to be out here. As the LA Lakers shooting guard made his free throws, the game was stopped, and even though the Lakers were the guests in the match, the crowd gave Bryant a standing ovation, and he received hugs and handshakes from teammates and opponents. Minnesota owner Glenn Taylor also came out onto the court and presented Bryant with the game ball. What will be next for the basketball hero? Only time will tell. The 2024 Summer Olympics may be almost 10 years away, but the recent Olympic convention and the recent changes in the regulation got the wheels in motion. Rome officially announced its candidacy. Paris is expected to follow shortly, and they will have a strong contender from the other side of the Atlantic. We may not know which city it will be, but we do know the United States will put up a candidate. Uh, there are many different opinions about uh, which city uh, they think we should put forward. But um, 
we're going to take our time. We're going to make, we're going to go through a very deliberate and thoughtful process, and we are going to pick the city that we think has the best chance of winning the competition against the other cities uh, uh, from around the world. So while some are looking ahead, there may be a serious problem in the upcoming Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Dangerous levels of a super bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics have been found in the waters where sailors will compete in the Olympic sailing events. The bacteria was discovered in water samples taken at three spots along the Rio Carioca, a small river that runs into the Guarana Bay, where the sailing events will take place. When the city was chosen to host the 2016 Olympics, it committed itself to cleaning up the polluted waters where athletes are scheduled to compete, a job that was not apparently not done, a fact that many do not see as a surprise. The researchers have found a super bacteria at Flamingo Beach, which isn't very surprising seeing the city of Rio de Janeiro, a 21st century metropolis, still has a sanitary reality from the 18th century. This is the entire hydrographic basin of Rio de Janeiro and was transformed into a garbage and sewage canal and everything is thrown into it. No such problems in Tel Aviv, where the water is clean, the weather is nice, and the surf is great. Just the perfect conditions for the junior pro surfing event. While the beautiful Tel Aviv sun shines most of the year, Israel is not known to be the premier place in the world for surfing. But the winter water brings some big waves to the shore and allows surfers to enjoy the first annual Carver Junior Pro in Tel Aviv. The Israeli Surfing Association held the fourth round of the 2014 competition for children and youth, which brought some of the best in the sport into the water. The competition was sponsored by Carver Skateboards, which gave the riders monster waves. The host of the competition was especially happy with the turnout at the event. We got really lucky today with the waves. The waves are amazing today. It's sunny, it's like, it looks like California today. It's just uh, unbelievable. The contest showcased four divisions and hit a record number of registered surfers, bringing around 100 riders. There are multiple rounds in the four categories, being girls, juniors up to age 14, age 16, and lastly, up to age 18. Despite being the winter, the riders got to the beach early in the morning and were ready to tackle the water in their wetsuits. They first warmed up with some stretching and then headed out for their first ride of the day. There are many clean waves for the juniors in the morning as some of the riders got high up into the air. There was a lot of excellent waves seen in the girls' division as the riders gallantly moved along the water and stood tall. The top female rider bounced along the waves with much delight, but she knows the difficulty of surfing in Israel. It's a challenge because uh, we don't have a lot of waves and uh, we need to practice a lot and it's, it's hard. However, a surfer always gets the best satisfaction after a brilliant ride. When you go and you score some good waves, it's always, you always feel good. The riders flew along the water and tackled some hard waves. The winners of the tournament took home trophies and also the top winners received skateboards. The winner of the male juniors was especially pleased after finishing on top for the year. It was a good day, a contest, good surfers high level much higher than uh, always and uh, I'm happy happy for winning and uh, had fun as Israel looks to find their next star surfer this fantastic event left the riders looking for more in the future mankind's oldest dream has always been to fly like a bird well for some the dream is a reality Australian daredevil Nathan Jones jumped from a cliff high above the ski resort of Chamonix in the French Alps. He flew just off the ground next to the cliffs and the rocks, and if that is not enough, then the trees came along. This very scary stunt ended with a gentle landing in a field right below, and it was all part of an endeavor called Human Flights for Human Rights, where the aim is to use base jumping skills to raise money and awareness to help people in the developing world. The riders of MotoGP are on their deserved winter break, but that doesn't mean some of them are not riding. 
Mark Marquez, for example, the world champion for the past two years, doesn't like to lose even if it's not the GP circuit. Last year, he came in second in the Super Prestigio dirt track race held in Barcelona. So what did Marquez do this time? He went one better, of course, and won the race. Marquez is one of only four riders to have won world championship titles in three different categories. Something tells me that if there was a world championship in Super Prestigio, he would win it also. And that's it for us today. Don't forget, you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.